Hello everybody, welcome. This is the second part of the calculator tutorial. In the first part we built a calculator language and used it to build some swing forms. Now in the second part we'll look at how to constrain references and how to define types for our language. Our calculator language currently suffers from one bad problem. When we create a form In the output field expression, we can refer to fields from other calculators. Normally, we only expect developers to enter the input fields from the current form, not from the others. So we need to restrict these references to only point to input fields defined up here, not in other calculators. So that's what we're going to do first. So we need to specify constraints for the input field reference so that it only points to input fields within the same calculator. So we create new constraints and the, in the reference constraints part we'll constrain the link t pointing to field, so to the input field. There are currently two ways to implement scope. Inherited and reference scope. Let's start with reference scope since it's a bit easier for simple cases like this one, but it doesn't scale that well for larger for larger languages. In that case inherited is better and we'll do that and we'll do this one in a minute. For reference scope you simply have to return a collection of nodes that you want to put put in scope. Well, the nodes have to be wrapped inside scope. So we take the enclosing node for the current node. So we are inside a reference. Now we're trying to resolve reference to, a, to some input field declaration. So the enclosing node will be probably the expression. So we need to take an ancestor of type calculator which is the closest calculator in the AST climbing up from the reference. But now, when we have all the nodes that we want to put in scope, we need to wrap it inside the scope object that we can return. So let's create a variable to hold all these input fields. And now we'll use one of the predefined scope objects that are available in MPS to wrap these nodes. It is called named element scope. So we'll import a model that contains that root. This is the one. By the, by the way, control R is to import a model if you only know a name of a root concept in that model. So now we create a new instance. We pass in all the input fields and this is what we return. So now control F9 and going back to my salary 2, now Java hours is underlined because it is out of search scope. and trying to complete we only get the local input field, the one coming from this form, not from the others. So we implemented scopes correctly. Now let's undo this change and try the second option. The one that follows the hierarchy of nodes inside the model. So we'll use inherited scope and we'll be searching for input field. So by this we say that we're looking for all input fields and we'll climb up the the model and in each ancestor, if the ancestor is a scope provider, we'll give that ancestor a chance to put items in the scope. So in our case it is the calculator that can provide input fields into the scope. So we make 
our calculator a scope provider. And now in the behavior section we will implement a method that will put items in the scope. So in calculator behavior we override control O or command O on Mac. We override the uh, get scope method well, the one taking two arguments. Now it seems scope has not been imported, so we need to uh, add the scopes language. This one. Yes. Good. Well, now in this method, calculator can add items to the scope. So we might ask if kind. So if we're looking for, so now we're detecting what items are being searched for. So what are we looking for? Well, if we're looking for input fields, then this is something we can contribute to. So let's say if the request comes, now if the request comes from any of the output fields, now, to detect that, we have some special language syntax we can use. You can use to detect where the request comes from. We need to import that language first, though. So now we need to import scopes. So control L. We're looking for scopes language. So if we come from, so we, if we come from output field, so now we can again return new named element scope, but we need to import scope's runtime again. So named element scope, and we give it all the input fields this input field. Otherwise we just return parent scope. Whatever that is. We just delegate to the parent to make a decision here. And I'll perhaps turn this into a return into a return statement. Okay, let's try. Compile And again, correctly, this is marked as out of search scope. And code completion only reveals input fields from the current calculator form. All right, so this is scopes. Well, now the type system. This is going to be pretty easy. When you look at a form, you see that we have no type information about these fields. So with, although they are integers, that's what we expect in the form you type in a number and we even parse it with integer parse int. So you shouldn't do things like with making it part of a condition. So with is an integer so it shouldn't be used in a place where boolean is expected for example. So we have to somehow indicate with is supposed to be an integer. So with, as we've implemented it, is an input field reference. So this is the place where we have to, for this is the node for which we have to specify a type system rule. So we have to say input field reference if it is of some type. So here is input field reference, and in the type system we add a new rule, inference rule. And this is the place where we say that a type of input field reference or input field reference is equal to integer. So we do colon, uh, control space, and there are several options. Say so we can specify that that it's type system equation, so it must be exactly integer, or can be a subtype of or a supertype of but in our case, equation is just right. So, it's type, so, so the type of input field reference should be 
or integer. Well, there are several ways to say integer time here. One way is just to create new node of integer type and they say that the type of this should be equal to this. So control F9 we got back here and now we get type system error type int is not a subtype of boolean so our type system now our type system rule is now in effect now back to the type system rule there are, there are other ways to enter a piece of you know set of nodes into your code okay manipulating nodes directly might quickly get out of hand if you if, if your model that you want to build becomes a little bit more complex than just one node. A better way in many cases is to use quotations because quotations give you a shorthand for building models, building parts of AST. A quotation is marked by less than and, and greater than marks on both sides. Quotation, here we go. And now inside quotation you just type code and it will be translated into an ASD and then added into the surrounding context. So integer type surrounded by a quotation will be turned into basically a node of integer type and then the type of our input field reference will be compared to that. Either way we now have a type system rule that ensures that all input fields are only used in places where integer is expected. And that's all. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.